Philadelphia in the early 19th century. It's the most violent the city has ever been in its entire history, but even up to today. Drunken brawlers on election night, tavern keepers stabbing police forces. This is quite common. There are roughly about 50 different gangs in Philadelphia. There's labor riots, there's race riots. You have laudanum addled kind of uh, working class characters in these hovels of homes. It's a very kind of dark and, and eerie and gothic place. Edgar Allan Poe comes to Philadelphia in 1838 into the ruins of what was once the Athens of America. The beautiful design envisioned by William Penn had undergone a change into narrow alley streets, houses of vice, taverns, brothels, the places where the respectable citizens, the lawyers, the bankers would find their way towards in order to kind of indulge in the vices of the city. Philadelphia becomes the crucible for Poe's imaginative genius. He stops writing so much about supernatural things and he starts writing more about everyday chaos. Poe's stories now, stories like The Black Cat, stories like Telltale Heart, it's not the supernatural ghost who is out to hurt you. It could be your husband. It could be someone living in your house. George Lepard meets Edgar Allan Poe when Lepard's only 18 or 19 years old. George Lepard was one of the most extraordinary Philadelphians of, of his day. He was born into a poor family, grew up in Germantown. Lepard's radical anti-capitalist class politics um, comes from his own life experiences of impoverishment and poverty at a young age. He was a, a socialist. He believed that the capitalist economy that was developing in Philadelphia was creating glaring inequality. And in a sense, he used his novels to expose that inequality, to, to really show the, the kind of our uh, city that was, that was developing in the 1840s, and it wasn't a pretty sight. He'd often take his readers through the, the alleys and courts of Moyamensing, where the, the city's poorest residents tended to live. George Lepard recognizes the city as corrupt. His novels take on an increasingly political tone, very different from Edgar Allan Poe. His, his novels were, were full of gothic tropes that portrayed a, a, a kind of fantastical version of Philadelphia, this city of darkness. In one of Lepard's novels, a character walks by the second bank and observes that it glistens in the moonlight like a sepulcher of dead fortunes. For Lepard, there was a voyeuristic gaze that he'd direct onto these kind of back alleys as the kind of settings for his great city mystery novels, The Quaker City, as well as The Killers. He was showing just how far Philadelphia had descended from the noble intentions of its founders. There are more Gothic novels published in Philadelphia than any of the other publishing cities of the country. As Lepard discovered, democracy has a dark side. <laughs>